Hey there, Happy New Year and welcome to the first tutorial of 2018. Andre here from BSD Box. And today I'm going to show you how to make this surreal manipulation in Photoshop. It's really simple. Anyone can do it. You can use any Photoshop version for this. We're going to use free images for this. And what I'm going to show you here is how to create custom brushes, how to create these cloud brushes over here and how to make this blending that you see here. Something really easy for beginners and I uh, hope you will enjoy it. You can download all the images from my website, the links on the video description. So uh, that's all, let's get started. So for this, we're gonna use free images as I said, all of them are from unsplash.com. And we're gonna start by opening the background image, which is this one over here. You can find other images on unsplash.com. You have lots of uh, similar images with the sea of clouds like you see here. And this is the one that I used. Before we start working on this, we have to create a custom brush. Don't be scared of that, it's really easy. And I'm gonna show you how to do it step by step. First, let's open the image that we're gonna use to make our brush, which is this one. And if you're wondering why we're creating a custom brush, it's because uh, instead of brushing with a soft brush, this part over here, uh, it's all more realistic to create it using a custom brush with a real cloud uh, because it's a lot better, I think. So we're gonna use this image. You can use other images if you want, but make sure you have a clear sky and you have well-defined edges on the cloud that you're using to create the brush. So the first thing we want to do is desaturate this image. You have um, various um, ways of doing it. Um, the quickest one is pressing Shift Command U or Shift um, Control U if you're using a PC, or simply Control U and drop the saturation to minus 100. Uh, I'm going to use the Shift U. Okay, so we have this ready, but we have to invert the image because brushes work. Um, a bit on the opposite way so everything that is black on the image will become visible when you make the brush and everything that is white will become invisible so if I were to uh, save this as a brush now uh, the clouds will not be visible which is what I want well I want the cloud to be visible so we have to invert it with control I now uh, we're almost done but um, we have to make this sky be as close to white as possible without losing quality, uh, without losing information here on the cloud. We want to have these textures and these tones here because this will give volume to our cloud and will not make it look flat. So in order to do that, we're gonna press Control Command L. This will open the levels. And we're gonna move this slider, the highlight slider, the one on the right, uh, to the left. More or less to where you can start to see this peak here of information and you don't want to do something like this because you will because you will lose detail on the on the edges and it's not what we want. So we're gonna leave it somewhere there, and we're also gonna darken the shadows to create something like that. And with the midtones, you can uh, play with this, but I would not touch this because we're gonna use details and we don't want to get something flat like this. So we're gonna leave it to one. I'm gonna click OK, and now if you wanna just touch the top part because we have this pretty well defined edges, you can use the quick selection tool and just select the top part like that um, and I'm going to press Control command L and just uh, move the slider slightly to the left like that and I'm going to click OK. Now we are ready to save this as a brush we just need this part over here we don't need the bottom part so you can use a brush and paint with black if you want on this bottom part. Okay, now we're gonna go to edit and define brush preset. As you can see, it's grayed out. The reason why it's grayed out is because the image is too big. The maximum size of the brush is 5,000 pixels, at least in Photoshop CC 2018, which is the one I, that I used. But if you're using another version, uh, maybe uh, in Photoshop CS5, I think it was, it was 2,500 pixels. So in my case, I'm gonna drop 
the highest value that you have here, the uh, either the width or the height should be 5000 pixels or 2500 if you're using an, an older version of Photoshop. Now if I go to edit again, you can see that the fine pre uh, brush preset is now active, so I can select that. And just I would give a name, clouds, and just click OK. And you can see that the top part is uh, it's black because it's transparent. I'm not going to save it because I already have it saved. Uh, so I will just close the image and now I'm going to open my background image because I apparently closed it and my brush is here. You can see that here is on the list. I have several because I made this uh, several times. Now let's move on and open our elements. First I opened this um, Liberty statue uh, image. You can use other uh, images like the, the Eiffel Tower or the Empire State Building or whatever you want. But I wanted to use something that everyone would recognize. So, um, and something that, sh that is really tall. You can use a bridge or I mean the Golden Gate Bridge or whatever you want. Now I have the tolerance set to 41 on the magic wand. Contiguous off and point sample. And just click here on the sky. This will select everything, including this part over there. I will not refine the edge, but you can do that if you want. Um, I'm going to alt click the layer marks to get rid of the background and right click and apply it. Now, control A to select everything, control X to cut it and control W to close, not save. And now I'm going to paste that image. You can see it's out of its background and I'm going to right click and choose convert to smart object just in case I want to change the size of it and I don't want to lose quality. I'm going to make it a bit smaller about that. Big somewhere over there and just enter to accept the change. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add the boat. I will get it from the other document because uh, I don't want to spend time refining the edge here, but I'm just going to show you how I made it and how I did this. So with, so with the magic wand, just click on the background and that's it. In this case you have to choose contiguous and probably drop the tolerance to about 20 or 25 and just click on the background that white and then shift click to add areas to your selection. Uh, the water is really easy to mask so don't worry too much about that. So once you have the selection around the man and the dog, alt click and, and click the layer mask icon. This will mask the background and now with the regular brush Hardness to about 70 or something like that. Just brush there and with a shift, just click uh, there and then there and you're done. Just get rid of the water and have a semi um, soft edge there. Well, actually it looks pretty good, so I'm not gonna use the other one. I'm gonna right click and choose apply layer mask. Uh, usually I don't apply the layer masks um, just in case I wanna refine the edges or something like that. but. In this case, I'm going to do it because it's something really quick that I'm doing here. And with the eraser, I have to get rid of that. And I'm going to leave the boat over there. And probably the statue should be a little smaller. Okay. And now we're going to use that cloud brush that we created. But first, let's rename our layers. Let's name this statue and this one boat. And we're going to create a layer mask for each of them of these layers. So right cl uh, click on the layer mask and click on the layer mask and we have a layer mask for both layers. Now let's start with a statue. The first thing I want to do is get rid of this um, this hard, hard edge. You can see the boat here is not well masked because I use the magic wand so I have to use the eraser to get rid of all these bits around here. If you want to make sure that everything is erased you can double click and add a contour, oops, not bevel and emboss, a stroke, sorry, and use a really crazy color like something like this and increase the size. And if you have any bits around here, you will see them light up with this color. So that's a way of checking if everything is well erased or simply control T. You can see if the selection box is that big is because there's something around here, as you can see right over there. But anyways, let's, let's move on. So I'm gonna select the statues layer mask and with the brush, uh, let's set the smoothing to zero, opacity and flow 100% and a really soft brush. I just want to get rid of the edges. So you can see that just doing like 
doing something like this is not really that realistic. So um, that's the first step. Now I'm gonna get that cloud brush that I created, this one over here. And with the black color on the layer mask, I'm just gonna paint once there and another click right over there. Like that, oops. Probably let's leave the original size of the brush. Like that, okay? If you wanna soften that brush, that edge, you can double click on the layer mask and depending on the Photoshop version that you're using, you can use the feather to fade the edges a bit to just uh, smoothen them like so. Okay, so we're done with the statue. Let's do the same with the boat. Select the layer mask of the boat and just uh, with the brush. Oops, that's, I, don't, I don't see the brush boundaries. Now you can press the caps lock to uh, change from the precision mode to the contour mode and just click there a couple of times on the especially on the on the edges oops that was too much so you have to rotate it on some cases and do something like that but i don't want to hide completely that side over there so like that i think that looks great now and again here we can double click and use the feather option to fade uh, a bit the edges and that's pretty much it and the effect it's done that's how i created this the next step is just creating lighting and making this look a bit more realistic so let's start with the statue um, the most important thing that i wanted to show you uh, it's this how to blend the um, the images here for the statue i use the hue saturation since i have this as a smart object i can control u to open the hue saturation and drop the saturation a bit to minus 30 or something like that now add some curves, clipped, so Alt and click there, or click this icon over here. This will affect only the statue now. And I'm gonna give you the values that I have here. I have three points, one with input 140, uh, sorry, 43, and output 54. A second point with input 129, and output 190. And then a third point with input 200 and output 238 and this will give more light see that to the statue but I'm gonna change the blend mode to luminosity because I don't want to affect the contrast of the color so see that it, it keeps the color to where I had it when I used the hue saturation before and after now I'm gonna use layer styles as well you can see the light comes from the left side maybe I'm gonna move a bit this a bit more towards the left well actually let's leave it there uh, this light comes from the left side so with the layer styles you can use inner shadow I used two if you don't have Photoshop CC you will not be able to add several inner shadows so you have to convert each style into a layer and then reapply it with different settings so in this case I have one of it you can copy the settings from here you can see the color value you can pause the video and copy it and also on the PSD file, which you can download for free, you can uh, see how I done how I've done this, and you can see the angle, everything. And then I use the second. Uh, this is just to add light on the right, on the left side, sorry. And the second one to add shadow on the right side of it. Okay, this is just to shift the light, if you will. Okay, see the before and after, and. The same on the boat, you can do the same, but in this case, I didn't use layer styles, I think, I don't remember. I used a, a normal layer, clipped as well, Alt-click when you see this icon. And I just used the brush, uh, soft brush in this case. Uh, let's get a soft brush, something smaller. I'm gonna sample a color from there and just use something like that. Multiply blend mode and your opacity to 50 and flow to 30 and just darken uh, the back of this guy here but I think I have the shape dynamics on let's do it again okay just darken part of the of the man's back and you can see the edges here are horrible but uh, you'll have to spend some time there I also use the hue saturation and I just changed the reds. 
I desaturated them and just moved it a bit to the side there. And I changed them more a bit towards yellow. And I think that looks a bit more realistic because it was too saturated for my taste. Just try to match the lighting of the background and that's, that's it. And then I created some glows of light with a new layer set on screen with a soft brush, opacity and flow. Why it's not accepting the change? Oof, that's too big. Opacity and flow to 100% and just sample a color from here, something not too bright, something like this. Let's see how that works. And just click once. That's a bit too extreme. Once, one click there. And then for the man and the boat, I'm gonna use a clipped mask. Because I don't wanna create the glow over the clouds, just over the boat. So if I do it on the same layer, you can see I add the the glow also on on the clouds and on the sky. So what I could do is, if I don't want to create a new layer, what I could do is control click the boat and on the same layer where I created the glow there, I can create I can create it here as well. So check it out, okay. And that's, that's how I created this. Then uh, just some, uh, I don't know, general adjustments, a color lookup, I like to use the, maybe this one and drop the opacity. You can use any adjustments here, so I have lots of them. I have a tutorial showing you how to create your own uh, 3D LUTs. And maybe another one, I think I used the Sienna Blue and I dropped the opacity as well. On the, on the PSD file, you can see exactly which adjustments I used. Uh, let's brighten up a bit the screen. So that's how I created this. Uh, then I used the Camera Raw filter, but that's really up to you. That's how you can create this effect but I wanted to show you how to create the brush and blend the images. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any problems or any questions, you can leave a comment on YouTube or on my website um, and I try to help you. So hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.